This video is about heuristics and relaxations. Sometimes the problem is too difficult to determine the optimal solution or it may take too much time to uh, calculation time to determine the optimal solution. And in those cases, a heuristic can be used. A heuristic is a method that we can use to find a good solution in a reasonable time. But that solution is then generally not the optimal solution. So the advantage is that we get a solution quickly. The disadvantage is that the solution is typically not the optimal solution. And we also don't know what the quality of the solution is uh, that's given by a heuristic. However, we can also talk about relaxations. And relaxations of a problem uh, will tell you something about the quality of the solution of a heuristic. First, what is a relaxation? A relaxation is basically the same problem, but then without some of its constraints. And the optimal solution of a uh, relaxation gives us information about the quality of the solution that we find by using a heuristic. And that's because if you remove some constraints, the solution that you will find can only become better. So the optimal solution of a relaxation is kind of a bound for the optimal solution of the original problem. A little bit more in detail. So we have the original problem. The original problem has a certain feasible solution space. If we remove part of the constraints of that original problem, then we get a broader feasible solution space. So the feasible solution space of the original problem is always contained in the feasible solution space of the relaxation. Um, it is often possible to remove uh, constraints in such a way that the problem becomes easier to solve. So that's also what we would like to do if we are going to use a relaxation. We remove some constraints in such a way that we are able to solve the problem. And then there are two situations possible. The optimal solution of the relaxation can also be feasible for the original problem. So that's what we see over here. This is the optimal solution of the relaxation. So the entire feasible solution space of the relaxation, there's no better solution. It means that there's also no better solution if we only consider the feasible solution space of the original problem. That means that this optimum solution of the relaxation is also the optimal solution for the original problem. So that's what we have if the optimal of the relaxation is in the feasible solution space of the original problem. The optimum solution of the relaxation can also be outside the feasible solution space of the original problem. So that's what we see over here. It's still the best solution uh, for the entire feasible solution space of the relaxation. That means that uh, if we only consider the feasible solution space of the original problem, there cannot be any better solution. So this optimum solution of the relaxation is better than the optimal solution of the uh, original problem. So you see indeed that the optimum of relaxation is uh, either also optimal for the original problem or it's better. And that's why we can use it as a bound. Let's now apply this idea of heuristics and relaxations to a very simple vehicle routing problem. So here we have a depot and we have eight locations. We have one vehicle that is located at the depot and that vehicle should visit all the eight locations A until H. And after that it should also end again at the depot. And then there's one more constraint, namely that the vehicle can drive at most 100 miles without refueling. And refueling is only possible at the depot. And then the question is, which route minimizes the total distance? So then let's think about a possible heuristic that we could use. So we are at the depot and we would like to visit all eight locations. A very simple heuristic is then uh, that we say that we first go from the depot to A and then we go back. Then we go to B and we go back and so on. So this could be a heuristic. So in words, we then visit all eight locations one by one. And after uh, visiting a location, we go back to the depot. So this is what we then get. So the 19 plus 19 plus 14 plus 14 and so on. That gives us a distance of 232. So this is a solution, but it's not the optimal solution. Uh, and because this is a minimization uh, problem, the better solutions have a lower uh, distance. It also means that this distance of 232 is an upper bound uh, for the optimal solution of the problem. Upper bound because we are using a heuristic. We can maybe think about ways to improve this heuristic. So do we uh, see ways to reduce this total distance? Uh, 
What you can see, for instance, is that if we go to A, and if we then go back and then to B, then the total distance is 19 plus 14. However, if we make a direct connection from A to B, then it's only 31. So it's not 33, but then it's 31. So the total uh, travel distance will be reduced if we make the direct connection. And that's, uh, redu uh, we have a certain reduction for all kinds, for all direct connections. So also if we immediately go from B to C, then it's not 33, then it's 30. So for each outer edge that we use, the total travel distance will be reduced. And that can be used for a second heuristic. So a second heuristic is that we start with the solution of the previous heuristic. That means that we are now talking about an improvement heuristic, because this second heuristic can be used if we already have uh, a solution. The first heuristic that we have used was a construction heuristic, because the first heuristic uh, constructs a solution. And now that we have a solution, we can try to use the second heuristic, which is an improvement heuristic, to find a better solution. Um, so we start with the solution of the previous heuristic, and then we check all cities uh, in clockwise direction, and we make a direct connection if that's possible. And that it's clockwise, that's just a choice, but we can formulate heuristic however we uh, like. The only uh, important thing is that we get a feasible solution. So we go uh, from the depot to A, then uh, we uh, check, can we immediately go to B without going back to the depot? That's possible. So the maximum distance of each sub-tour is 100. This is still below 100. So it's 19 plus 31 plus 14. And then the next question is, can this edge also be added to that sub-tour? And the answer is again, yes. So then we can get a better solution if we also make this direct connection. You see that each time that we make a direct connection, the total distance of the um, uh, solution goes uh, down. So still an upper bounce, but it's now a better upper bounce. We cannot immediately go from C to D, because then the tour that we would get would, would have a length that would be uh, more than 100. So then we check, can we go from D to E, that's possible. Can we go from E to F, that's possible. We can even go immediately from F to G. This uh, second sub-tour also has a distance below 100. Now we cannot make a direct connection from G to H, and we can also not make a direct connection from H to A. So this is what we will find if we use this second uh, heuristic. Distance is uh, 214, and this is still an upper bounce for the optimal solution. So the optimal solution is likely to have a lower uh, total length. So that's uh, what we can uh, do by using a heuristic. So our first heuristic gave us uh, a distance of 232. Second one gives us uh, a tour with length 214. And again, both are upper bounds. That means uh, that the optimal solution is either at the upper bound or it has a lower value. Our best upper bound so far is 214. That means that the optimal solution either has a length of uh, uh, as a distance of length 214, or its length is uh, lower. So this is, in this case, how a heuristic is related to an upper bound. We talk about upper bounds because it's a minimization problem. So we now have a feasible solution with length 214. The question is still, how good is that solution? Are we very close to the optimal solution, or are there maybe improvements possible? And for that question, we can use relaxation. So this problem is quite difficult to solve. And there's one constraint that makes it difficult, and that's the maximum distance of 100 miles without refueling. If we remove that constraint, then the problem becomes much easier to solve. And that's because the more outer edges we use, the better our solution becomes. So we already realized that it's better to use this 31 to immediately call from A to B then uh, go back from A to a depot and then go to B separately. And that's the case for all outer edges. We can, of course, not only use outer edges because there should be a point where we go from the depot to a first location. And there should also be a point where we go back to the depot. So what we can do is we can use all outer edges 
except uh, for one of them. Uh, so that's what we need to realize in order to find the optimal solution of this uh, relaxation. Then the question is, which one are we not going to use? So now within brackets, you will see the saving if you use an outer edge. So for instance, if you use this one instead of going back uh, from A to a depot and then going to B, uh, then we have a saving of two. Here the saving is much higher, so it's much more important to use this outer edge. And here it's uh, even more important. So we are not going to use one of the outer edges. And we can, of course, choose which one we are not going to use. So we are not going to use uh, the one with the lowest saving. Lowest saving is the two over here, but you also see that two over here. So one of those two outer edges sh should not be used. So this is an optimal solution of the relaxation. And this relaxation has two optimal solutions because this is also an optimal solution of the relaxation. Both have a distance of 202. Uh, this is a relaxation. It's the same problem, but then without uh, one of its constraints. That means that the optimal uh, value becomes lower, becomes better. So this 202 is now a lower bound for the optimal solution. So we had the upper bound of 214. And we also have a feasible solution with length 214. We now also know that the optimal solution of the original problem can never have a distance lower than 202. So this is a lower uh, bound. Uh, that means that we now know that the optimal solution is in between 202 and 214, the distance of the optimal solution. And we currently have a feasible solution. So we have uh, an ex uh, a solution that is allowed with distance 214. That means that the cap between the current solution that we have, current best solution that we have, and the optimal solution is at most 12. If you think that that difference is acceptable, then you can stop here. If you think that that's distance, if you think that that difference is not acceptable, then we should try to further improve this uh, current tour. So that can be done by trying to find a better heuristic or by trying to find the optimal uh, solution. A general overview, so we have uh, we have been talking about heuristics and relaxations. Um, a problem can be a maximization problem, it can also be a minimization problem. If you use a heuristic for a maximization problem, then you don't find the best solution, but you find a solution with a lower objective value, so then you'll get a lower bounce. A relaxation that gives you an upper bounce. So this is the case for a maximization problem instead of a minimization problem. We have considered a minimization problem, then a heuristic gives you an upper bound, and a relaxation gives you a lower bound. That's just what we have seen on the previous slides. Another important difference between a heuristic and a relaxation is that the heuristic gives you a feasible solution, and a relaxation typically gives you a solution that is not feasible for the original uh, problem. However, relaxation can be used to say something about the quality of the solution of a heuristic. So very useful to use a heuristic to find a solution if a problem is too difficult to solve to optimality, and then to use a relaxation to say something about the quality of that solution.